next map shows the Indian Peninsula. In the northeast corner of India lies the state of Nepal, among the foothills of the Himalayan mountains. Kathmandu is the capital of Nepal, and the town is built in a mountain valley. To reach Kathmandu, you take the train from Calcutta to Roxal. Here, the standard railway stops, and a small mountain railway goes a little further on. Then, it too stops, and the rest of the journey must be done by road. It is not a very good road, and it is better suited to foot travellers and riders than to carts or cars. The road goes through Chandragiri and then passes on to Sisagari. Here there is a fort which was one of the old defences of Nepal against attack from the south. Beyond Sisagari, the road runs on through the hills and the next important place is the village of Maku. After Maku, the road becomes even more rough, but it is the only way to the town of Kathmandu. The track beyond Maku leads sharply upward until you reach the top of this hill from which you can see the Himalayan mountains. On the top of the hill, most travellers stop to rest. Those whose shoes have been cut by the stony road wrap up their feet before they go on. As they rest, they can see lucky people being carried past on litters by coolies. From the top of the hill, the road goes down into the valley where Kathmandu is built. Now the ground is fertile and the people are farmers. They dig up the soil with hoes and they grow crops and hay. The shepherds pasture their flocks on the mountainside. Near Kathmandu itself, there are fruit trees lining the road. And on the road into the city, you will see lines of coolies carrying fuel into the town, for wood is not plentiful. If you look at the countryside, you won't see many trees. And now we come with the coolies into the town of Kathmandu itself. The tops of the buildings stand out clear against the sky and you will see that they are like pagodas and are more Chinese than Indian. The streets and the markets are full of people of all kinds, but many of them have a Chinese type of face. Here is a little girl buying vegetables to take home for dinner. In Kathmandu, the people have all kinds of religions. These are Hindus going into their temples. Below the temple is a lake where Hindus from all round come to wash away their sins.
These are the two eyes of the prophet Buddha, painted on a Buddhist temple. There are prayer wheels at the gate, which people turn as they go in. This woman is carrying her prayer wheel with her as she takes her little girl to church. This is another temple, the temple of the monkey god. There is a carving of the god outside on the left. The streets of Kathmandu are full of activity and business. The building at the end of this road is the Durbar Hall, where state meetings take place. Here is the King of Nepal arriving with Nepalese statesmen and foreign ambassadors. The carriages and motor cars in which they are riding all had to be brought up in pieces over the mountain track which you saw at the beginning of the film. The black line shows their route from the railhead. Nepal has two rulers. The king is the head of the state from the point of view of religion, and here you see him on his throne. This is the second ruler, the prime minister, who attends to the business and government of Nepal. The position of Prime Minister is handed down from father to son. The state of Nepal is closely allied to Great Britain, and here is the British envoy greeting the Prime Minister and other statesmen. They are responsible for the welfare of all these people who throng the streets and live here in Nepal beneath the shadow of Mount Everest in the northeast of India.